The U.S. is now a tax haven for multinational corporations. There will be a playlist of videos with details on what's summarized in this quick video. Congress has passed the most sweeping changes to international tax law since 1962 when Subpart F was introduced. Before the changes, U.S. corporations were subject to regular tax, lately at 35%, on their worldwide income. U.S. tax on earnings of their foreign subsidiaries was deferred until remitted as a dividend, and then the corporation got a foreign tax credit for the taxes the subs had paid on those earnings. Several exceptions, under subpart F, required that they include subs' earnings when earned, even if not remitted. Subpart F applied for sales or services outside the subsidiary's country involving related parties, and to interest, dividends, rents, and royalties. It did not apply if the sub was taxed at more than 31.5% on those earnings. Those earnings could stay deferred unless loaned or dividended back. Now, multinational corporations won't be taxed at all on dividends from their foreign subs received after 2017. They will pay tax of only about 10% on other foreign income including any other subpart F income. What's more, the threshold foreign tax rate for avoiding subpart F is only 19% for U.S. corporate shareholders beginning in 2018. So here's what changed. First, the corporate tax rate is only 21% after 2017. That has very broad implications. There's also a change for flow-through businesses like partnerships, S-corporations, and sole proprietorships. The owners get a deduction of 20% of business income. This 20% deduction applies after 2017 for all income if the individual has under $350,000 for joint or $175,000 for other filers of adjusted gross income. Above that threshold amount plus a phase-out, the deduction only applies to businesses other than service businesses. Further, it's limited to 50% of W-2 wages or 25% of wages plus 2.5% of depreciable assets. While these two changes are not strictly international, they have a major impact on international taxpayers. <laughs> All U.S. 10% or more shareholders of foreign corporations, even U.S. individuals, must include their share of the foreign corporation's cumulative earnings in their income for 2017. Let me repeat that. All U.S. 10% or more shareholders of foreign corporations, even U.S. individuals, must include their share of that foreign corporation's cumulative earnings in their income for 2017. Some fiscal year rules may cause this to be 2018 or both years. But then they get a deduction that effectively reduces their tax rate on this income by 55% or 77%. That's a tax rate of 15.5% or 8% for corporations. The lower deduction and higher tax applies to earnings held by the sub in cash or equivalents, and the higher deduction and lower tax to other earnings. Plus, if a U.S. shareholder properly elects it by their 2017 and or 2018 tax return due dates, they get to pay this tax in eight installments. 
The first installment is only 8% of the tax due. Thus, any 10% shareholder must make a payment of a half to 2% of the cumulative foreign earnings by the tax return due date. This payment, plus all other taxes for the return, must be paid by the due date. There are no extensions for this, and being even a day late triggers the full amount. U.S. corporations will get a 100% deduction for dividends they receive after 2017 from any 10% or more owned foreign corporation. They don't get a foreign tax credit for any foreign taxes paid by the sub or any withholding taxes on the dividend. But hey, it's tax-free. This benefit is mitigated a bit with a new type of subpart F income. If a controlled foreign corporation earns pre-tax income in excess of 10% of its basis in productive assets, then the excess is subpart F income. Each U.S. 10% or more shareholder is still required to include his, her, or its share of the CFC's subpart F income in his, her, or its income each year. This subpart F inclusion comes before dividends, and then dividends, including those in the same year, are non-taxable to the extent the earnings were already taxed. Remember, though, that it's not subpart F income for corporate shareholders if it was subject to foreign tax of 19% or more. It's not subpart F income for individuals who are shareholders if it was subject to 33 and a third percent or more of foreign tax. For more rules, see the three videos on subpart F. Offsetting this, U.S. corporations having this kind of subpart F income get a deduction for 50% of it. That is, they only pay tax on half of it. Their foreign tax credits flowing through are reduced by 50% too. This deduction does not apply to other types of subpart F income. The combined effect of the inclusion and deduction is a tax rate under 10% for this high return income of multinational corporations. U.S. corporations also get a deduction of 37.5% of other foreign derived intangible income. That's a defined term and the definition is quite complex. Foreign derived intangible income is income other than subpart F inclusions and dividends and some other items in excess of a 10% return on assets producing that sort of income. It includes only income from sales of goods to foreign persons or performing services for foreign persons. The combined effect of this is to reduce the tax rate to 13% on direct income from foreign customers. This income does not depend on the source rules of Section 861 to 864, but on who the customer is. In addition, the source rule of Section 863B has been changed. Income from sale of goods by the taxpayer producing the goods is now sourced 100% to the place of production. There are a few changes to the basic rules of Subpart F that may cause many more foreign corporations to be considered controlled foreign corporations. The 10% test is now 10% of vote or value after 2017, and the 30-day testing period is gone. In addition, stock held by foreign persons can be attributed to U.S. individuals. 
The old deemed paid credit under Section 902 for U.S. corporations receiving dividends is gone after 2017. They don't need it. It's tax-free. Instead, the subpart F deemed paid credit will apply. This Section 960 credit will work much like the old Section 902 credit, but only for subpart F inclusions. There are other changes to the foreign tax credit also. First, it's reduced proportionately for the deductions for dividends or foreign-derived intangible income. Second, non-passive income of all foreign branches is now a single separate basket. Corporations may elect early application of global expense apportionment, and the fair market value method of interest expense apportionment can no longer be used. New rules apply eliminating deductions for interest or royalties under hybrid transactions. Finally, there's a new base erosion tax on U.S. subs or branches of large foreign corporations making payments to foreign related parties. This 10% alternative minimum tax applies only to corporate groups with global revenues in excess of half a billion dollars. It's computed by disallowing deductions for payments to foreign related parties other than for cost of goods sold. The deductions are allowed to the extent there is U.S. withholding tax on the payments. The result is then compared to regular tax, and the tax due is the higher of the two. Deloitte calls these changes a sea change in international tax. That's almost an understatement. Multinational U.S. corporations will reap huge benefits due to the combined effects of the corporate rate change and the deductions allowed related to foreign income. Their effective U.S. tax rate on foreign income will be 13% or less and tax-free with the right planning. These changes should also cause mid-market businesses with international sales operations or subsidiaries to rethink not only their planning but also their structure. Tax planning by CPAs with international tax knowledge and experience is now more critical than ever. I'm available to help CPAs with this planning. Visit my website for contact details and more information. Watch the other videos coming in this series for more details on the international and domestic changes in the 2017 tax bill. I hope you found this useful, and thanks for learning with me.